Hello there, welcome to Inquiring Minds. My name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen review. Today's fountain pen review is this, new model Hongdian N8. The pen is very similar to the Hongdian N7, but the N8 is a cartridge converter and not a piston filler. It's about time that China celebrated the best country in the world to live with this tribute to Canada. Do it. He's in Welcome to the Great White North. I'm Bob McKenzie. This is my brother Doug. How's it going? Okay, eh? our topic today is the Great White North because we got like lots of mail, eh? Like w about it, eh? Yeah. Okay, so <clears throat> this. By is the it. way, this topic was my idea. Eh? I understand Hongdian's tribute to their own country with the Hongdian 100, with its red star and Chinese temples, but they finally recognize that Canada is the best place to live in the world. Here is CNBC's rating of the top 10 places to live in the world for 2022. I draw your attention to the fact that three of the places on the list are in Canada, more than any other country, and the number four place to live is in my city of Calgary, Alberta. So kudos to Hongdian for recognizing this and making this red maple leaf fountain pen in tribute. The other color available in the N8 is Snow White, which is also a tribute to Canada. And just like Canada, this N8 is pretty, useful, well-built, thrifty, humble, and is ever so sincerely sorry when it fails you. Let's take a look at this maple leaf beauty right now. So I have an idea what this might be, but not completely sure, as all the numbers get switched out by Canada Post now. So let's open this up. And it is what I expected. This is the red Hongdian N8. And I was told by a number of viewers that I should be purchasing this pen as it complements this N7. And also because it's red with maple leaves and I'm a Canadian. Uh, I'm not all that fond of red pens, but the fact that this has rose gold on it as well and I like the N7 so much. The N7, of course, is a piston filler in that peacock blue with the peacock feathers. And this is a cartridge converter, so it's considerably lighter than the N7, which may be of some interest to people. So I thought, well, I might as well get one and see what the other differences might be. So there's the nib and it's in rose gold it's very comparable in size to the pelican m800 especially when you post them both together but that acrylic is quite lovely very sparkly and very chatoyant so i shall clean this out decide on some sort of ink to go in this and we'll put it through its paces and do a review the hongdian n8 in maple leaf gold and canadian red and what i'd like to do today is go over the parts and features of this pen show some size comparisons some measurements and then provide a writing sample after the writing sample please stay tuned as i will talk about what i like and what i don't like so much about this fountain pen the n8 is visually very similar to the n7 piston filler model but there are some slight dimensional changes. As you can see, if we line up the cap rings, the cap on the N7 is larger, but uncapped with the sections lined up, the N8 has a longer body. The obvious differences are that the N8 is a cartridge converter pen and the N7 is a piston filler with an ink window. But the sections are different too, with the N8 having a section made of the same acrylic resin as the body and is in a barrel shape, where the N7 section is colored metal and tapered. The nibs are the same size, but the nib units are different and not interchangeable. In fact, the feed of the N8 is ebonite, where the N7 is plastic. Overall, the N8 is in a luscious, chatoyant red acrylic resin with a metal cap and the hardware is rose gold. From the top, we see a flat rose gold colored metal finial with a maple leaf stamped into it. The N7's finial had its design under an acrylic dome where this one is just a flat metal. 
It's unfortunate that Hungdian chose not to align the maple leaf with the clip. This will make Canadians with OCD a little anxious and in need of a Timmy's double double. I'm headed on a Tim's run, let me know what you want, I can pick it all up. Ooh, heck yeah, buddy. Double doubles and some donuts, tell me if you want some, I'm headed on a Tim's run. Alright, let me tell you what I'll have. The red metal cap has a rose gold maple leaf pattern that is very nicely done. It tapers up and then is straight to the thin cap ring that has LT Hongdian on the front and the model number N8 on the back. The rose gold colored metal clip is exactly the same as the N7 model's clip and is nicely springy and usable. There's a small step down to the barrel uh, which tapers all the way down to two rose gold colored metal rings that have a transparent enamel paint between them. Then there's the faux end cap with the same uh, lovely chatoyant uh, acrylic and ends in a flat metal finial. The cap unscrews with one and a half turns to reveal the barrel shaped section made of the same acrylic as the body and is bordered by rose gold rings at the bottom and the top. The number six size steel nib is rose gold colored to match the rest of the hardware on the pen and there is the black ebonite feed. The section actually has a slight taper to it. Let's look closer at this nib. This is a different design for Hongdian that I've not seen before. There's a lovely flower design which is not even remotely a maple leaf uh, and a bell-shaped breather hole. Then it's stamped since 1997 Hongdian F in brackets for fine and 35. I have no idea what that 35 means. Uh, it couldn't mean 35 years from 1997 because the math is all wrong. And the nib and the feed are part of a unit that unscrews uh, from the section for maintenance or replacement. The section unscrews to reveal the included high quality Hongdian branded cartridge converter. This converter can be disassembled for easy cleaning and has a nipple that's reinforced with a metal ring. Very kinky. Kinky. <laughs> Clinky. <laughs> and the rose gold colored metal nozzle has a silicone o-ring at the top that keeps the barrel from unscrewing during use. The pen will accept both Parker and Lamy long cartridges. The inside of the cap is lined from end to end with a black plastic sleeve and those plastic threads engage with the cap barrel threads uh, so it's plastic on resin. That should seal the nib nicely and reduce any cap thread wear. The cap posts deeply and securely, but because the cap is metal, it does tend to back weight the pen slightly. Unposted, the pen is plenty long enough to write with comfortably. I bought this pen from the Lustfer store on AliExpress and paid $26.25 US, but it's currently priced at $29.99 US. The N8 is also available in white with a feather motif on the cap and both colors are available with extra fine or fine nibs. Now let's look at some size comparisons. Here is the Hongdian N8 Canadian with the Hongdian N7 piston filler, a Pelican M800 piston filler, a Wingsung 629 piston filler, and a Hongdian N6 piston filler. Now let's look at them posted. And here they are posted. The Pelican is an 18 karat gold nib and the Wingsung 629 currently has a 14 karat gold nib in it, but it's also available in a steel nib. And the M6 is a black Fude nib from Hongdian. Now let's look at them unposted. And here they are unposted. They're all a decent length for writing with unposted. Now let's look at some measurements and I'll be back with a writing sample. And we're back with the writing portion of the review. This is Claire Fontaine, 90 GSM paper, and this is the Hongdian N8, and it has a fine steel number six 
nib. Let's check the wetness. It's decently wet right now, but was extremely dry when I first inked it up. I used my spark plug gapping tool uh, to widen the slit in the nib to make it write a little bit wetter, and that's helped a little bit. The nib is smooth with a good deal of feedback. And the ink today is Pen BBS number 175 Stendhal. And here is a swatch that I did of the Pen BBS 175 Stendhal. Uh, on Tomoe River paper. You can see that it, uh, it shades to a dark, dark red with some bit of green sheen to it. As to line variation, there is none to be had to speak of. This is a very stiff Chinese steel nib. And the line this nib makes is 0 0.3 millimeters or a western extra extra fine or a Japanese extra fine to fine and that's on my Richard Binder line width chart which you can find linked in the description and for our quote And for some reverse writing. Yeah, it's very dry. But it's actually doing it once I got it started. Pretty scratchy though. And some quick writing. Yeah, it's running, running a bit dry. Actually, I think I was running out of ink. Yeah, that feed doesn't have a problem keeping up. So what do I like and what do I not like about this fountain pen? The best thing about the Hongdian N8 is that it's a cartridge converter. Not that there is an advantage to a converter pen over a piston filler. It's the fact that the N7 is such a nice pen that now those who prefer a cartridge pen over a piston filler can have essentially the same pen. The N8 is a substantial and well-made, feels great in the hand, both posted and unposted, and is very attractive. A medium nib would be nice as this fine nib is very fine indeed and the EF has to be a needle point. The pen is advertised as being available in EF and F nibs that are 0.38 and 0.5 millimeters respectively but in reality the fine nib writes like a 0.38. I would expect Hongdian to come out with more colors and patterns in this model. Now what do I not like about it? The first thing is this misaligned end finial with the maple leaf. It's like a Canadian distress signal. Canada will invade the United States. We call it Operation Rabid Beaver. <laughs> we will attack by land, sea, and air Canada. And trust me, nobody wants that. It's weird that Hongdian can pay attention to such amazing details in their designs and then screw up something so simple as symmetry. I'm not fond of this nib. It's stiff and relatively dry. Well, it was dry when I first started and I fixed it. And it was very unpleasant as well until I got it to write a little wetter. Still, it isn't a pen that I plan on writing with. The ebonite feed is a nice feature, but it's useless with a nib that doesn't flow. A plastic feed would be just as adept at keeping up with this trickle of an ink flow. Swapping the nib is an option, but finding a substitute number six size nib in rose gold would be a bit of a challenge. And a mismatched colored nib on a pen with a misaligned finial might just send the pen to the island of misfit fountain pens. What do you expect? They're Canadian. And there you have it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe, and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. And please look in the description for a link to Goldspot Pens, as I'm now an affiliate of the online store, and when you shop at Goldspot using my link, you'll be supporting my channel as well at no extra charge to you. 
You can also join as a member of my channel for only 99 cents a month and I guarantee I'll answer your comments in the comments section and you'll get cool emojis, badges and sneak peek unboxing videos as well. And that just leaves it for me to say, thank you for watching. And that's all she wrote. I made this.